The Fundamental Theorem of Algebra. Hey guys, this is Karan here in this discussion of polynomial functions. Up to this point, we have corresponded the notion of graph crossing the x-axis with zeros. That's fine if you're limiting ourselves to a real number line. Now, if we have a function that x intercept that somewhere, we say that it corresponds with a factor and so on, we, we, what we need to do is expand that idea just a little bit. Although it's very true that a parabolic curve, as you guys can see over here, for example, whose vertex is about the x-axis and which open upwards. It open upwards. That has no x-intercept. That means no zeroth value in real system. However, just to expand our thinking, complex number, it will turn out to be direct correspondent and between the number of zero and its function. And the degree of polynomial function is that the essence of what we call the fundamental theorem of algebra. Okay? So let's go ahead and talk about the fundamental theorem of algebra. Now, if you have function f of x function of uh, polynomial degree, let's say n, and, and n is greater than zero, that then f has at least one zero in the complex number system. Okay? So there's a little rule for it. So let me go ahead and write down the rule. If you have a function, and in that function, and nth degree polynomial function has exactly n zeros. What I'm going to do now is give you guys an example over here. Okay, so what do I mean by this? Now let's say we have a function of f of x, like we said, is equal to let's say uh, x raised to 4 minus x raised to 3. Uh, let's do this x raised to 4 minus let's say plus 8 okay so the nth degree that we have in the polynomial function is the fourth value so how many exactly n zeros will happen if this 4 represents the n value the nth zeros will have exactly 4 and 4 including them could be it could be complex number or it could be real number okay and in most of the cases both of them are mixed together. That means, I don't know the zeros of a function, but it could also mean that this function could have two complex numbers and two real numbers. It could also have one complex numbers minimum, okay, that is the minimum requirement if you have a n polynomial, if you have nth degree which is greater than zero, that's the minimum requirement. It, it should have one complex number in, um, included in itself. So in this, if you, if you count by the minimum weighted, this should be in the function represented over here. It could be one complex number and three real number. Okay? Now, the, to understand this concept, we actually need to know factorization because this equations will lead us to factorizations. Now, let's say if f of x is polynomial of a degree n, and n is greater than 0, and then f has precisely n factors. That is exactly what I just said over here. Now, therefore, n factors. This tells us about the existence of a factor, but it doesn't tell you about how to find them. Okay? So our idea now is to after the investigation for them, and we need to find out 
uh, already the investigation of numbers of techniques at this point. So we know the basics that it's a very simple equation. For example, let's go ahead and take an example. Let me go ahead and erase, erase this. Okay, now for let's say for example, if we have f of x is equal to x squared minus x minus 6. So what are the zeros of this function? Now zero is basically trying to tell us if a function graphs, if x is, uh, if y is equal to 0, what is the value of x? Okay? So what are the zeros? Well, we can actually find out without graphing it. Well, how? We factor it first. So you factor this f of x function and it turns out that it's x minus 3 and x plus 2. Okay? And this is the, f the f of x part is equal to 0 as we all know. So what I'm going to do, since this is the factor form and we already know this, I'm going to make it equal to 0. Now that I made it equal to 0, I'm going to take this uh, equation, small part of the factored equation, which is x minus 3, and make it equal to 0. So it would be turning out to be positive 3. Then I'm going to take the second factored equation, which is x plus 2, make it equal to 0, turn out that it will negative. So when you graph this function, okay, the zero, it, there should be a point where it looks like this. So let me go ahead and graph, show you the uh, basic structure of how it's gonna look. Okay, what do I mean by the zeroth function? Is that if you graph it somewhere here, it could go in negative two, it has a point right here, and three, one, two, three. So it has zero point right here. If you can't notice them, it's right here, and it's right here. Okay? And the graph could be curvy or anything like that. Okay? Since we haven't graphed it yet, we don't know how the behavior, the behavior of the graph is. Okay? But we sure do know the zeroth value of this graph, which is negative two and positive three, which we just found out by the method of factorization. Easy enough, right? Now let's go ahead and do another example. Now another example that we are going to take is g of x is equal to x squared plus 4. Okay, now what do we do? Well, we make g of x, which is representing the x y value, okay, make it equal to 0, is equal to x squared plus 4. Now we know that we, we need to carry this 4 positive and turn it over here. That would make it um, negative 4 is equal to x squared. Square root on both sides will give you uh, x is equal to positive plus or minus radical negative 4 okay and you you see I'm where I'm going right now because we're trying to involve the complex number okay so here we have this and now that we learned the complex number in our previous section let's go ahead and use that uh, idea that we said i is equal to square root of negative 1 and i squared is equal to negative 1. Okay? So this is just a reference if you have forgotten this. So what x will turn out is that x is equal to plus or minus 2i. Okay? So G, uh, if you try to find out the factored form of plus and minus 2i, what it would look like is this.
Now I'm keeping this for your reference, okay, so you don't forget it. So the factor form of this would be g of x is equal to x minus 2y and x plus 2y. Now notice that we have involved x in it. Why? And this this is the fundamental theorem of algebra, is that if you have plus, uh, plus and minus 2i, you take the minus and put it with x minus 2i, that's the first part, now what's remaining? The positive 2i. So you add x plus 2i and make it into a um, factored form, okay? So basically, here's an interesting situation, it's all cropped up together. Okay, so that's basically it. And if you try to find out the values of x, you get a complex number. Now, let me go ahead and take an interesting situation, it's all, which is all cropped up. Okay, so let's go ahead and use that formula and uh, the equation. What I uh, is what I mean. Uh, and let me go ahead and erase this part up because we we need space over here. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a f of x is equal to x squared and I would in encourage you guys to do this with me. So the factor form would be this. You can basically do it out okay, by calculator or if you know the factorization thing, which we learned in our previous section zeros would be x minus 3 is equal to 0 would give up positive 3 x minus 3 equals 0 which gives up positive 3 right so x is equal to 3 now we there is no two positive threes in a graph okay so we just take one value of if it contains two same digits that is let me go ahead and show it up here that messed up so this would be positive one two three since there is no other positive three we just indicate a point over here that's it okay so you see if you have, if you have if you come up across this situation you exact you know exactly what to do now right now let's go ahead and involve a fourth uh, when a function when n is equal to four what do I mean by this? Let's go ahead and let's go ahead and learn what discuss what I mean by this. When n is equal to four, so when n is equal to four, the the function would be x equals x to the fourth power. Now remember the power is n. That's exactly the reason why I said n equals the fourth power. So if when you factorize this would be equal to f of x is equal to x squared plus 1 and x squared minus 1. Okay, now factorize it again, this part, so it would be f of x is equal to x squared plus 1. Now let's go ahead and factorize this part, which would be x plus 1 and x minus 1. So here I'm going to take a pause and stop continuing with this is that when, when you equal this to 0, the 0th value you get is negative 1. When you equal to this to 0, the 0th you get positive 1. Okay? Now let's go ahead and factorize this over here. This would be exactly equal to x squared plus 1 equals 0 is what we do, right? So x squared is equal to negative 1 and then you would basically get x equals plus or minus i. You see you're, you're having you can continue this by writing this as x plus i x minus i and the number you get is two complex numbers and the number you got over here 
is two real numbers. So which which adds up to four and that's exactly what we have. You see the point I'm trying to make is that the exact the nth value is always equal to the factors that it comes out. It could be either complex vector or a real factor, but in most cases they're mixed combined like in this situation. What's happening is that we have fourth and when n is equal to four, uh, you have two real numbers and two uh, complex numbers. So they are all mixed up together. Okay? Now at this point, what we want to do is uh, point out the zeros happen in conjugate terms. Okay? So in our investigation of functions calculation, we made our observation like the leading coefficient made a uh, test. Okay? Leading coefficient test. Now, what we need to do is some, make some equation like synthetic division that we talked about which identifies zeros and factors and whatnot. So, well, we are going to try to throw up a couple of more observations and calculations here. The next technique we are use, uh, we'll talk about is called the, the rational zeros test and it works like this. So let's go ahead and talk about it. Let me give you guys an example and teach you just doing the example because it's nothing hard it's just uh, involving this basics so let's say and this function is going to be a long function phi x cubed you see I've added the leading coefficient minus 2x squared minus 25x plus 10. Now, if you get shocked by looking at this equation, it's basically you don't have to get shocked. Even if it's 10 digits larger than this, I could solve it by without looking at this. Now, what do I mean by this? Let's go ahead and understand what do I actually mean by this. Well, the possible zeros is what we are trying to find out, right? So, it turns out that a math mathematicians has created a formula to find out possible zeros and this could be an easier way instead of um, using factorization okay so factors of the constant now if you forgot what the constant is let me go ahead and point it out this over here is the constant represents this Okay, now factor of, of the constant divided by the factors of the leading coefficient. Okay, now what do I mean by this again? Let me go ahead and point it out. Leading coefficient is phi. And in most of the cases, what, the, um, what teacher we taught to do is your teacher will try to do is that they would mix up what they would do is put negative 2x squared plus 5x cubed minus 25x plus 10 well that's not in right order right so you have to put it in the right order that basically means that the highest coefficient the highest n value comes first and it decreases as it goes by goes by okay so you have if it were two negative 2x squared uh, negative 2x squared then plus 5x cubed minus 25x plus 10. We need to swap this around so we can make it 3, 2, 1, 0. And the 0, the 1 which has 0 is basically known to be constant. So let's go ahead and try out this formula over here that we now know. Uh, so the zeros would basically equal to plus and minus 1 okay plus and minus 2 I'm writing all the factors down for 10 over here so plus and minus 5 and plus and minus oops plus and minus 10 okay all divided by the factors of 5 that would basically be plus and minus 1 and plus and minus 5 so the possible outcomes okay the possible outcomes is uh, 
I am running out of space here. So what I'm going to do is erase this up. Even though I didn't want to because the formula was right there. Okay, so the zeros would be 1, 2, 5, 10, 1 divided by 1, 2 divided by 1, 5 divided by 1, 10 divided by 1, 1 divided by 5, 2 divided by 5, 5 divided by 5, 10 divided by 5. Now, you see 10 divided by 5, 5 divided by 5 is equal to 1. So what we want to do is not to repeat ourselves. Okay, so what I'm going to do with the zeros, I'm just going to write them down. And what you need, let me go ahead and write it down. So here what I've done is wrote down the zeros, okay? Now the next step you basically do is to use, uh, there is a test called synthetic division. Now use the synthetic division and make sure that the function we had before is uh, when you plug the, the value of x such as plus one or negative one, when it turns out to be zero, the remember, re remain there turns out to be zero, that's the zeroth function, okay? So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. There's a Facebook page down below in the description area. Click on that and make sure you like the statuses I post and stuff like give it a like, comment, and subscribe here on this video and which will make my day and thank you for watching.